What up, party people? You're listening to the Drunk Sports Podcast with Big Red and Indy Cartem. Talking sports, current events, guy stuff, and everything I'm in not between. Ready for this. Now open up a cold one and drink along. Because here up, they buddy. are, Lance and Tim. Gentlemen. You can buy me a drink. <laughs> We're all drunk. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 Too Tall Jones. And thank you, Mr. Ben Rogers from 105.3 The Fan. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome, welcome, welcome to this episode of the Drug Sports Podcast. I am IndyCar Tim, along with my favorite partner that's here right now. Big Red, baby. Big Red. Big Red. Mr. Big Red, baby himself. And we are live from the Horny Toad Cafe and Bar in Denton. Texas. Big red. Big red. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank we you. are at 5812 North I-35 <laughs> in Denton, Texas. We're on the southeast corner of the north side of town on the North Loop 288 and the I-35 frontage road by the old uh, outlet mall that seems to have failed miserably about 20 times, but somehow the building is still there. I'm not sure how that's It's like an the antique case. mall now. It's so many things. When they built it, it was going to be the next big thing, and it's still there, well, and I, I mean, don't know it just, how. It just moved further north. It moved it through by the river. Hello to our drunk dudes and dolls and our drunk sports pod tards. Good old pod tards. We appreciate you. We are on Facebook Live right now. Um, we courtesy, have some, of, courtesy of my esposa. <laughs> courtesy of um, Stacy Gibbs hyphen Dorset. Um, because we have connectivity issues in the facility here, so we're fighting through that. We're trying to do the best we can. But we are recording. We're going to wing it. We're winging it. Uh, Lance's tattoo, new, new tattoo is bleeding everywhere. Um, but we're going to fight through that as well. Um, once again, we are at the Horny Toad Cafe and Bar. They are at hornytoadcafe.com. Lance, did you know that the, tech, the Texas Horned Lizard, also known as the Horny Toad, is the Texas State Reptile? Yes, I did. Why is there a Texas State Reptile? Because the horny toad is the greatest little animal that ever lived, and I remember being a kid. I've never, I've been in Texas since 1973. I've never seen a horned frog or a horny toad. You've never seen my a life. live horny toad. Nope, ever. What in the actual hell is wrong? With never you? seen one. I thought it was a mythological creature that TCU invented. I don't know what that is. What is the the thing? It's, it's here. Look, what is that? It's a horned frog. Did you go to TCU. TCU. You didn't go to TCU. I Are you allowed st- to do that? I can still support them. It's like a secret handshake? Well, it's, it's like, I do it like this. My fingers are cut off. That's the Monty Python rabbit. It's big, got big freaking teeth. Shut Whatever the hell that Tim. is. I don't know what that is. So, yes, we appreciate the horny toad, Tim and Jeremy and Josh, everybody here. Wendy, our bartender. Thank you to Wendy. Little Miss Wendy, thank you so much, sweetheart. She has sweetheart. got me on my way to the drunk was it out was of the, the drunk fireball sports podcast. was it the jameson or the second bucket of beer that's uh, got it you? was two tall beers uh, we are on our second bucket we had a shot of fireball and a shot of jameson with a pickle chaser that you ordered which is new I, to me i've never had that before you have lived a far too sheltered life my friend dude i didn't talk to people like you when i was growing up all right we had you standards were scared and of morals me. you were scared of nah, I was, people like i was me. a very sheltered child i wasn't allowed to watch sesame street either but that's a whole nother story for another day um, so once again, hello to everyone here. We want to say a special hello and welcome to the guy in the red hat waving at us right now. <laughs> Sorry, we were blowing your right blowing ear his out. ear out with our speaker. We want to say hello to <laughs> Billy Hensley of Wire Rims fame, the greatest band that ever rocked. By the way, Wire Rims will be at Backyard on Bell in Denton this Thursday. Did Wire Rims hopefully playing outside? If you want to come hang out for that for that spot? Uh, yes, I paid us for that spot. I mean, Billy paid us for that spot. Okay. All right, uh, cool. And then the lovely Bye. and talented Stacy Gibbs hyphen Dorset is here. We want to not Gibbs anymore. No. You got rid of the hyphen. Are you official now? No, they're not official. But so there is a hyphen there. We're Facebook official. Or there's not a hyphen. It's just Stacy Gibbs. There is no Dorset. Well, her daddy can have her. Oh, whoa, whoa. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, Tuto. So, once again, we thank everybody for being here. They're just here drinking. They don't even know we're here. We're watching NBA Finals right now. Golden State leads uh, Toronto. Oh, I'm sorry. Toronto leads Golden State 47-40 with 335 in the second. 
Uh, and oh, it's not going well for Golden State, but we're not allowed to do play by play because we don't have the broadcast rights for that. You are um, correct, sir. So, hey, you know what? We need to do some shout outs. I've already done a little bit of that. Um, Tim, Jeremy, Josh, everybody here, the horny toad. We need to thank uh, Veronica with Creations 13. If you're watching us on Facebook, we've got some cool t shirts that we cut the sleeves off, so please don't tell her we cut the sleeves off because she's not here. Don't tell Veronica she was supposed to be here, but we've got, you know, cool koozies sitting out here. We do have some badass uh, koozies. If yeah. anybody here at the bar would like a free koozie, come up, come on up and get one. It's got my face and his face on it, so we apologize in advance. It's uh, beautiful, it's, dude. It's not going to be pretty, like, brother. even got it on my shirt. Yeah, so we apologize for that. We're not even the, apologies and corrections in the mirror every day. Uh, she also made this awesome tablecloth that some of you can see if you're watching the right feed. Um, and Lance, you had a special shout out, right, for our our official MMA fighter, Landry Ward. He is uh, so. We haven't talked about Landry in a couple weeks, but no, he's we been have busy. Not. Uh, hang on a second. Let me let me get back over here to so it. So, for those of you that don't know, Landry Ward is the official MMA fighter of our show. Um, he's a local guy. He is uh, a friend of Stacy's son, Aaron. Yes. Oh, I, got his, I got his name right. Sweet. Uh, so uh, Lance has met him a couple times. They've talked online. What's going on with Landry these days? Landry is going to be in, uh, in Florida next week uh, training with the uh, American Top Team, which is one of the, one of the, one of the best training facilities in, in the U.S. And uh, then he will be... Uh, he will his his next fight is July 27th in uh, Ensenada, Mexico, for the Elite Extreme Fighting. Uh, the guy he is fighting is Ruben Rivera, and he is three three and one as well. But uh, oh, give me Ruben, yeah, give me Ruben. Are we doing money? I apologize for the dead air because my co-host is now betting against the. <laughs> Oh, he's still our official fighter. Are we not allowed to bet against him if we think he's going to win? We are not going to bet against a oh. friend of mine. No, Landry, I got you all the way, brother. We know you're going to do it. You're going to win. And possibly, no possibly in the next week or so, we will have uh, the Lone Star Kid T-shirts on because if if we're still doing this together, because and maybe a solo broadcast. Dude, after today, we may split up and go Nobody our own separate will ways. Ever, if, if I we continue to run into technical issues like we have lately. Somebody is never going to find your body. After playing golf with you yesterday, I'm not sure that I can be your friend anymore. Shut up, Tim. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get to that uh, shortly. But uh, so, yes, Mr. Landry Ward, there's your rundown. There's your shout out. We love Landry. Brother, I got you back. I promise. <laughs> the uh, when a fight we need breaks to get out here in the horny toad here in a little bit. I we don't have room to fight. We're in a, literally in a corner. That's about three feet wide by four feet long. Yeah, I can, I, I can, I can pin you in, jump over the table, which you could never do, and I can throw shit at you. You literally have to get up out of your chair and walk around 18 feet away for me to even get out of where we are. And I will hit my head on that lot every for the time 18th I walk time by. today. Yes. yes, I will. Absolutely count for those of you not familiar with our absolutely count. Absolutely. Uh, Lance's crutch word is absolutely when he's nervous, drunk stoned uh on the air i am absolutely not drunk yet he says absolutely a whole lot so we count that so the game is when you hear the word absolutely you take a shot take a drink absolutely take whatever you want but it's going to happen so for the last episode uh, and this goes back two episodes because we had episode 12 and then we also had the golf preview episode 13 there were nine Absolutely. Just nine? Spread out. Only nine. I'm getting better. Are you? Because we went up from the week before. So I've regressed. You did regress. I so fell, everybody I, do thir- uh, do I, nine shots. You can I, do 13 if you want. I fell off the wagon. Nine shots, nine drinks of beer, shotgun, nine beers, whatever it is that you play at home. Kiss off, Tim. Kiss off, Tim. Whatever you want to do. That's our mm-hmm. absolutely count. Um, and then the favorite segment that we start with, apparently the favorite to everyone that listens, is apologies and corrections. So these are apologies and corrections from the last episode. Things that we fucked up. I'm sorry, screwed up. Well, there's one, there's one for next week. 
things that we screwed up that we need to correct or apologize for this week. So, first thing we need to apologize for is on episode 12 at Studio 69 at Casa Not So Grande, where we normally broadcast from technology one again because we did not figure stuff out before we came on the air man if if we were professional fighters and we fought against technology every week we would be like oh and 12 we would be <laughs> retired right now punch, punch drunk if we had to we, fight we would, technology we have to every be week alcohol drunk we would be punch drunk this has Thank nothing you, to do with it i Stacey don't know Gibbs. who you belong to but they need to muzzle your ass because I don't know how much more I can take so of you. So technology is the Harlem Globetrotters and we are the what is it, Washington Nationals? The Washington Generals. Generals. The Washington Natural. What are the nat- Naturals? <laughs> That's not the Naturals. <laughs> <laughs> the Washington Naturals. The Washington Nationals oh, are the Nationals. a baseball team. The Washington Generals, Generals are the are, basketball team. Are a basketball, yeah, so there's an the, apology the for next team. week. Four apologies yeah, and corrections. Get it together, hero. Hey, didn't the Washington Generals win a game once, like in the 60s? I want to say they're like one in 187,000 against the Globetrotters. You and I could Someone told win. me that they actually won a game one time. What's up, Myron Cross? Actually, Myron's on? That's what it says. <laughs> That's cool. Hey. Hi, what's Tiffany. Up? I, I Tiffany? Miss, I miss you, Tiffany. Please come home. <laughs> it's not my daughter, Tiffany, by the way. She knows who she is. Oh. I was um, like, shit, you got another kid? So, he's, he's already got like the like next note. She is not a child, sir. She is an adult and she is so hot. Anyway, hi, Lauren. Lauren's Tim's, not listening. Tim's real. That's why I'm talking to Tiffany. Life, wife, hi, Lauren. Or, or, hey, she is she who shall not be mentioned tonight. Crazy ass. Apologies and corrections moving on. I also have to apologize for the city of Dublin, Ohio, to the city of Dublin, Ohio, as well as the entire Columbus, Ohio metropolitan area and golfers worldwide because I referred (laughs) in our golf episode that we were previewing the great Jack Nicholas's episode. With my my very good buddy, John Gerber. With a pro golfer. From... Columbus with a pro golfer on the phone with us <laughs> Wednesday night. I referred to the Mirrorfield Village Country Club as <laughs> the, the Mirrorfield Valley Country Club, <laughs> and that was not received very kindly <laughs> by our golf pro, our resident golf pro who is from there. Um, I'm surprised he didn't just hang up and leave the damn show because he very well could have. He should have. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't come get the board and say, y'all are on your Dude, own. Dude, he was not happy. <laughs> I apologize, John. It was a slip of the tongue of something that I really didn't know the answer to. And I was trying so hard to sound smart. If you'd have just asked. Oh, jeez. I could have turned on the air. You could have turned your mic down and just asked. Well, it's funny because he had just referenced Muirfield Village like five minutes before I said that. Probably not even that long. So, yes. um, I'm a golf idiot. You big dummy. I apologize. (laughs) Uh, And then corrections. We actually have one for Lance this time who tried to make up his own word. Oh, no. Lance tried to make up his own word, which is my job. There is not a lance, lancenary. There is a timtionary. Well, not last week there wasn't. So Lance was attempting to use the word benchmark. And what word did you make up, Lance? Bitchmark. <laughs> Bitchmark. Which, as far as I know, is not in the American Dictionary. Funkin' Wagnalls, Webster, Who? Wait, 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 whoever. Wait, 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 wait. Where, where we go with that? Funk and Wagnalls. You sure there was an N in there the first time you said it. Hey, I'm a professional broadcaster, sir. <laughs> I enunciate my Dude, words. Neither one of us is professional. You see where we're at. I enunciate. So, again, I'm <laughs> apologizing to everybody in the bar right now. Hey, I said Funk and Wagnalls. Okay, Everyone wanna, heard me. Maybe you did. I just want to make an ass out of you. Yeah, you should have. You're welcome. Yeah, so... Apologies and corrections are done until next week because we have so much more now. Oh, just in the first uh, 14 minutes of this episode, so we're going to introduce a new ep- a new uh, segment that um, I'm really excited about. This segment, for the first time, it says it says, "Who needs a hug?" This segment is called "Who needs a hug?" And then it says "sheet." 
Yeah, because I have a sheet. This is my segment. Oh. Here's my sheet. This is my... Do you know someone that needs a hug? Stacy, do you need a hug? The drunk sports... Wendy, do you need the, a hug? The drunk sports podcast needs a hug. I mean, I'm not going to give you one. It was just, a, you know, hypothetical. She looked terrified when I asked her that. Like, you, I'm going to run over there and hug her <laughs> physically. <laughs> The Drunk Sports Podcast needs a hug. It's been a, it's Dude. Been a rough day. So, yeah, let's pull that curtain back a bit. So, we've had connectivity issues uh, with the location we're at today. We're fighting through it, but it was very stressful the first hour we were here. I thought Lance was going to throw a chair through a window, which I advised him against. I said, don't do it. it we don't own this place. It might have been windy before it was a chair. No throwing chairs. Don't throw ketchup bottles. It'll look like blood splatter on the wall, and we'll get arrested. Mm. Okay. So, Lance, who do you think needs a hug? Let's go. Dateline, May 27th. Philadelphia Phillies center fielder Odrubal Herrera has been arrested for domestic violence. He don't need a hug. He needs an ass whipping. After allegedly assaulting his girlfriend, where? At a Golden Nugget Atlantic City Casino Hotel. When are professional athletes going to learn you can't punch your girlfriend? So why does he in need public. a hug? Why? Why, why, do they, he, why does he need a hug? Because he's in trouble. He doesn't need a hug. He's his ass whipping. Hey, it's alleged. No. I haven't seen footage. You struck a woman. I want to hug him. You, he, struck, well, he's, you struck a woman and you need an ass whipping. He plays for the Phillies, so I don't really care what happens to him. No, it's Dateline, May 9th. Mr. David Beckham. Do you know who David Beckham is? Yeah, he's been at Lockheed Beckham. He's a soccer player. He's a sucker player. He is a sucker player. He is a English football player. So David Beckham had to go to court on May 9th for being charged with using a mobile phone while driving back in November of 2018. Have you ever been charged with using a mobile phone while driving? No, but I can charge about 50 people a day while So isn't driving that a, myself. I mean, that's like a law in a lot of, not just England, but that's a law here, right? Mm-hmm. In, like in, most municipalities. In, in, some, in, in some places, especially in uh, uh, school zones. So I ride a motorcycle a lot, a lot. And I've had some near misses from people that were distracted on their phones. And it's not cool. So what do you think David Beckham was sentenced to for being charged with using his cell phone while he was driving? Uh, this is England. I'm guessing this is England. I don't know. It doesn't say where. I don't know. Six months, no driving. He can't drive for six months. So it's a shame that he doesn't have enough money the to pay somebody to drive himself. probably doesn't drive a whole lot by himself anyway. He, he may have been driving his kid to get ice cream or something. So David LaFleur. David LaFleur? David LaFleur. <laughs> There's a flashback. The uh, the tight end picked by Mr. Troy Aikman himself. From LSU. Yeah. yeah. Uh, basketball teammate of Jason Kidd at Cal, by the way. Grab yourself one, man. Grab yourself one. You're welcome. So, yeah, there you uh, go. Thanks, hey, sir. as soon as I mention the next one, you'll understand why I said David LaFleur. David Beckham is in trouble, and he needs a hug. Dateline, May 31st. Packers coach Matt LaFleur suffered the first major injury of the Packers 2019 season. How? Ar- Arnie, you going to tell me who that is? He popped his Achilles playing basketball at the YMCA. So the new head coach of the Green Bay Packers will be coaching preseason from a golf cart. Pretty sure Matt LaFleur needs a hug. Lance, here's one for you. Oh, boy. Mr. Hank Haney. Oh, yes. No, Mr. Hank Hank Haney needs a hug? Dude, did you hear whenever they uh, interviewed Tiger before the tournament started this week, before the memorial, they interviewed Tiger, and they asked Tiger about it. Did you hear Tiger's response? Do you know what Tiger's response was whenever they threw out the whole... Yes, share it with go, us. Go ahead go ahead and go into what Hank Haney did, because you, you have it there. So, Mr. Hank Haney, renowned swing coach to many golfers, including golf Tiger. guru. He is considered a golf guru. So, Miss Michelle Wee says she is straight up angry over racist and sexist comments made by legendary golf coach Hank Haney. Yep. She said, shame on you, Hank. 
So what did he do? The 63-year-old Haney, uh, from his Sirius XM radio show on Wednesday, made stunningly offensive comments about the number of Korean players competing in this weekend's LPGA. US, uh, the, that was the U.S. Women's Open. I believe he was asked he who said, was going to win. He said probably a Korean. Here's the quote, and I quote Mr. Hank Haney. I couldn't name you like six players on the LPGA Tour. Nah, maybe I could. Well, I'd go with Lee. I don't have to give a first name, and I'd get a bunch of them right. He said about Michelle, you know what? She's hurt. I just don't know that many Lees. Where are they playing anyway? So he's m- he's minimizing the LPGA. I hope you're not asking open. me because I can't tell you, but I know they're on. I don't know where they're playing. So, Mr. Hank Haney, you and Michelle Wee need to hook up a hug together for each other. I bet she won't hug him. Um, the next one, and this is just from yesterday, Dateline June 1st, Serena Williams. If you're into tennis, she lost in the third round of the French Open. And I have something to say about this. Is she still, to, is she still swinging with baby baggage on? She's still swinging with the steroid arms. That's for dang sure. She's bigger so, than I So, do you know am. who she lost to, Lance? No. Okay, Miss Sophia Kennan. By the way, she's so hot. I don't know how old she is, but she's hot. She's got to be legal. She's playing tennis. Um, who's listed as an American, all right, in the French Open, but was born in Moscow, Russia. So hmm. I don't know how long she's been in America, but I thought that to be very unstable. Maybe she was a uh, mail-order bride and then broke up. Oh, she's too hot to be a mail-order bride. Dudes, okay, whoever's listening, Google image search Sophia Kennan, K-E-N-I-N. Uh, so poor Serena is now 3-2 and two in French Opens. She uh, won in 02, 13, and 15. She lost in 16 in this year. So you know what? Go play with your baby. Do another freaking Chase Bank commercial, whatever, but just stop playing tennis because you're an embarrassment. No, she's not. She's not an embarrassment. And then my favorite, who needs a hug? And Lance, you will appreciate this. Hopefully everyone here will appreciate this. Mr. Martellus Bennett. Marty B. Marty B., former cowboy. Uh Uh-huh. Is he he like the owner of the D. Marty B.'s outside of? No. No? No? So let me quote what Martellus Bennett said on a podcast three days ago. Apologies and corrections. Martellus Bennett said, I wish Tom Brady, oh, speaking about kneeling for the national anthem by the way oh man we no don't he says don't. i wish tom brady would kneel for the national anthem if tom brady would took a knee for the national anthem it would change everything he says white america would be like oh my god what is this that tom brady's talking about dude i, I don't even want to go into this because this brings up so much stuff with Kaepernick and everything else, and it just it's it's too it's it's just too much fuel for that. So and, then let me let me just I say am, I am I promise you I am the wrong man to bring it up to. You have strong feelings about this, uh, so don't. so I will address it. This is an editorial. This is my feelings, my thoughts, and mine alone. If I then interrupt you and to you the in horny the toad, Lance, or the drug sports podcast, this is just me, uh, Mr. Martellus Bennett. You sir are an idiot thank you do you know why tom brady and other people don't kneel for the national anthem i don't think he does i don't think he understands well they're later. americans because i know he's listening he's gonna listen he's gonna download this he's gonna listen martellus they have respect it's called respect they have respect for our flag they have respect for our veterans which lances is one they have respect for our citizens their teammates and you know what they have respect for marty b they have respect for America. I love you, brother. Thank you. So, Marty B., sit down, shut up, get off the air, because you, sir, are a miserable, idiotic human being. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. woo Oh, wait. Let me get that. I almost didn't even bring that up, but, dude, I thought that was the... And you know what? I don't even want to hug him. No. I don't want to hug him. I want to no. punch him in the lip. Well, I'm pretty sure he's about six foot seven and 320 pounds right now. But I know you got a buddy that would stand next to you. Probably Flozell would probably stand there next to you. To, <laughs> I guarantee you, Flozell is bigger than Marty B. I, I know he is. And Flozell will stand next to me. Absolutely. We're gonna have him on the Absolutely. show. Absolutely. All right, 
Who needs a hug is over. Good. I know, right now, after talking about who needs a hug, Close I need up. a hug. Yeah. Whew. Jesus Christ. All right. My head hurts. So we're moving on now to uh, short shots. Short shots, for those of you that don't know, are things that I wanted to talk about, but I don't want to do a whole segment about. But ironically enough, <laughs> it usually turns into a full segment We anyway. always turn it into a full segment, so everybody strap in, hold your breath, and don't, don't hold your breath. I don't know if we have any Rangers fans here. Anybody Rangers fans? That a baby. We got here. We go. Two out of twelve. All right. Hey, we RJ. got one. Welcome, brother. That is definitely not a Ranger. Hey, are you an Astros fan? Dodgers. Oh Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Dodgers. Wendy, 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 do not serve that man. Cut him How off the Dodgers now. Dodgers get more love than the Rangers in Denton, Texas. All right. So the Rangers season continues. Um, they are now after beating uh, Kansas City tonight. Uh, they won three of four over the weekend. They're 28 and 25, eight games behind Houston. We always review them every week. So a week ago when we did this broadcast, they were at 500, eight and a half games behind Houston. You need to turn your volume down on your laptop. Your mom needs to turn her volume down. We're not bringing my mom up on this podcast again. Sir. Dude, it's been a long time since we brought your mom up. We're not bringing that saint of a woman up in this podcast again. <laughs> it has been a long time since your mom came up. <laughs> Do not bring I my mom up. I forgot about that tradition. Wow. Yeah, we need to pay more attention to that. Last time was Mother's Day, but that didn't count. Well, yeah, we have to talk about our mom. Oh, so, yes, our lowly Rangers, they had a good weekend. Uh, the focus of the Rangers right now are is poor Mr. Rugnet Odor, who's batting a flimsy 166 and has about a, I looked, but I can't remember the exact number, was about a 536 OPS. Um, and there is no reason why he should be up with the big club other mm-hmm. than the fact, I believe he has exactly two weeks from today before he has his Major League five-year tenure. And he can decline an option to the minor leagues. So whatever J.D. is going to do, he needs to do it immediately because in two weeks, he can try to send Odor down, or Odor down, and Odor can say, nope, thanks, appreciate you, and he doesn't have to go. Odor is a train wreck. This is a crash. Um, we don't know if right we're now, ever going to see the 2016 Rugnet Odor again. But who else, who else has a horse purchase in their contract. There was a horse purchase. Whenever he signed his contract, he wanted a horse. Like a horse he could ride. Yes. Yes. He wanted a four-legged equestrian right. ride. Why? As part, as part of the, as, it was part of his contract. But why? Because he wanted to be a Texan. Oh, Jesus Christ. Rugned, who, by the way, has a little brother also named Rugned. How unstable is that? Well, I mean, who's in the Rangers farm okay. system? Well, I mean, then you're looking at George Foreman. So I don't know who you're talking about. That who else wanted a, a horse? Like I know the story of Walt Garrison of Cowboys fame. I'm not, His signing bonus was a horse trailer. I know that. Okay, so who he else can, wants a horse? Nobody else wants a horse because he's an idiot. Walt Rugnet Odor needs a hug. Walt Garrison can haul Rugnet's horse around for him. By the way, Walt Garrison, who lives about eight miles that way. Well, the, I'm pointing to the north, for those you, of you on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's north. That's, he is right. It is north. It's, it's, it's right there. It's north, yeah. So, poor Rugnet Odor. Um, team leaders, Andrus, 308 batting average, 10, to, 10, 10 stolen bases. The great Joey Gallo leads the team with 41 runs scored, 17 home runs, 41 RBIs. And by the way, did you see him get his very first grand, career grand slam? The salami? No, I did not. Yeah, so that happened. So now he's a legit long baller. Um, the NBA playoffs that literally no one cares about. Thor does. Oh, jeez. Your dog cares about the NBA playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he's the one that was arguing with you. We had apologies and corrections about Every time I mention the Golden State Warriors, he barks at me and tries to bite me in the ankle. Apparently, he's a is Golden he a State Se- Warrior Cur- fan. Is he a Stephanie Curry fan? Stephanie Curry. Because that's his name. I'm not going to call him Steph Curry if his name's not Stephanie. Um, lady, lady just tries to run off and go 
do her <laughs> lady things. Toronto leads the series one and nothing. They are underway right now, and I see studio people on the TV. So I don't know if that means it's halftime. Yeah, we must be in halftime. No, it, no, we're not. No, we're not. There's, there's. We got to be pretty close. I'm I don't a see a score because they're coming out of a break. But we know Toronto leads the series. Um, in a series that we know Golden State's going to win. So I again zero interest in, in the NBA. Oh, wait, I'll, we're about to have a score right I'll now. Pick them in five. Fifty-nine to fifty-four. Toronto with eleven. Oh, it's coming out of the second half or the uh, halftime. So eleven fifty left in the third. Five-point lead by Toronto. Golden State has the ball. And yeah, what's his name was just that. fouled. It was a, probably a stupid foul. Yeah, Boogie count. Cousins is be- Boogie Cousins is begging for another foul. He'll be in the Mavericks in the next two years. So. Shh. Um, so, yes, we really hope Golden State loses, but we know they're not. You know, although I've said it the entire postseason that this is an uninteresting NBA Finals, if Toronto wins tonight, all of a sudden we have an interesting Finals. Do you agree? Yes, I, I do agree with that, but I still believe that Golden State will win tonight and win the next three after tonight, and it will be over in five. Really? Yes. That's been my prediction. That's a shocking the, prediction the, the entire Big time. Red. I, I knew that the, I knew that Toronto was going to win Game One because Toronto was hot. They nobody were, knew Toronto was going to win Game One. I called they it favored. They were favored, it. right, they, by like one point. I called it. They were going to win Game One. I quit sports. They were going to win Game One, which they did, and Golden State was going to be off because they'd been off for nine days. The rest buildup was there, so. You know, I believe Golden State was going to shake the rest off tonight, and they're going to win tonight and the next three after tonight. You might be the only person who thought Toronto was going to win the first game. Well, ask my brother. I told him I told him he was going to win. Where is your brother, by the way? My brother is. Uh, is he managing his fantasy baseball team? I don't know how that fantasy baseball team's going, but yes, he's he's probably probably working on that. So, we also have another playoffs happening right now, the NHL playoffs. Anybody here hockey fans? That was a fake cheer from me. Thanks. There's only one other person here. Thanks, Billy. So, does anyone here know who is in the Stanley Cup Finals? Billy? What? What did you say? Boston and the Bruins? She said Blues and Bruins. Blues and Bruins. That would be correct. So, Boston leads that series 2-1. to one. Um, And I'll tell you why they lead this series. Just going into the whole series, I told you who would win. It's going to be Boston. Boston has a lot more experience. Um, and because of that, they are winning because of experience and the power play. So, in the NHL playoffs, experience means composure. It means consistency. Um, we got game four coming up. If the Blues are going to win that... Um, they've got to stay composed and stay out of the sin bin. They cannot keep committing these ridiculous, inexperienced penalties, giving Boston ridiculous power plays. Um, inexperienced, team, inexperienced teams usually get that adrenaline surge in the playoffs. That adrenaline surge for them usually causes mistakes. It causes them to commit penalties, hooking, tripping, boarding, because they're all amped up. They just want they want to play. All of that stuff causes penalties. So that said, I expect the Blues in game four, and I'm, I've, I've already picked, everybody knows it's on record, I picked uh, the Bruins to win the series. Um, I also expect for game four for the Blues to come out and play the game of their lives. They have done that the entire playoffs. They did it against Dallas, went up against a wall. Uh, they will regroup. They will play composed. Um, and they'll play... Like they have adversity, which they do. And they can't go down 3-1. to one, So I expect the Blues to win game four. I still expect the Bruins to win this series, though. I didn't expect it to be seven, but if the Bruins, if the Blues can keep, keep composure, I expect it to go at least six, maybe. I said five originally. Still might be that way, but I don't know, man. The Blues are playing way better than I thought they would. So I'm a little impressed, and I still hate the Blues. Do not give my brother-in-law anything to live on any hope (laughs) don't i still oh my god your fiance wife uh person over there just said go blues we've been married for over a year now i said fiance wife fiance wife she doesn't have your name (sighs) still doesn't 
doesn't have your name. I'm sorry about that. I, I mean, should I go file the paperwork? I mean, I'll do it if y'all need y'all need help with it. I mean, I've had about 18 wives, so I know how it works that I know of. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. So, Lance, there was this little golf tournament played this weekend up in the Dublin, Memorial. Ohio. Jack's this, tournament. Some dude named Jack Nicholas started back in, what, 76. Uh, we talked a little bit about that Wednesday with our resident golf pro, Mr. John Gerber. We hope everybody listened to the Memorial Preview Show where uh, John gave us picks. Yep. On um, on on to win odds, everything. And um, Lance, can you tell us how that went? I don't remember all the people that he picked, but I know he once again handed us a winner. Patrick Cantley won the golf tournament, and uh, I wish I had the odds and everything else around to uh, to tell you again how much money. I would have won had I put the money on it to do it. Which you but, didn't uh, do because Stacy wouldn't let you. <laughs> Stacy, don't clear your voice at me again. She holds you in back. Front of people. But uh, no, she does not hold me back. No, uh, it's, it's it's my account. It's my dues. I, I've got this. But uh, yes, Johnny Gerber gave us uh, gave us a winner. And uh, bless you, sir. Thank you. To uh, to John and anybody else that put that out there, so so the 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 leaderboard as they finished today, Mister American Patrick Canley. By the way, John, I, I was reviewing it on the way here. He also said that the scores would be low. He predicted that he's like, as long as the weather stays clear, we're gonna have low scores. I think he said maybe as low as 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 14 or 15 under right. for the winner. Yep. Well, Mr. Patrick Cantlay won the tournament at minus 19. Well, he won it at minus 19 because the course played slow. It was it was it was much much more playable. It was uh they were they were able, able to fire at pins. The greens weren't hot. So, uh yes, that's why the that's why the scores were up. Either way, he was correct. Yes. Johnny was correct. Uh, he also one of his one of his picks was Mr. Adam Scott, who by the way finished second at seventeen under. Mm. So I would say Mr. John Gerber, we know he's listening right now, um, kind of hit the nail on the head. Correct. He's been pretty hot lately, as he usually does. Uh, and I thought it interesting that we we always talk about the purses, the total purses for these these tournaments. Um, the majors obviously are more. Uh, the first preview episode that we did for golf was the, uh, masters, the masters. Mm -hmm. And I believe we discussed the purse being at what? 9.2 million, something like that. It's a ballpark and, it, and it's large. It's, it's a major. Did you know the purse for this tournament was $9.1 million it's as a, a non-major? What is Jack's tournament? I mean, everybody puts out for Jack. Will it ever be a major? No. No, we'll never have a major. fifth major. No, I mean I well, know there's if, the so-called fifth major. If there's going to be a fifth major, it'll be the players, but I don't think it'll ever be called a true major. So, Mr. Patrick Cantlay won 1.6 million dollars. Adam Scott in second, 982 thousand. Uh, Martin Kamer minus 15 in third, won 618 thousand. Kevin Stillman, the American, comes in fourth, minus 13 with 436 thousand. And, dude, there's a lot of money flowing around up there in Dublin, Ohio today. Well, I mean, Johnny Gerber can get your golf swing where you need it to be, and maybe one day, I mean, we... we think did, I could win $1.9 million one day? Uh, no, but... Because uh, I would totally fund, fund an album for my may, band. may win $1.9. I, I'd take that. It's more than I got right now. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, and we did we did play. I, I got... I got freed, and the doctor let me start swinging golf clubs, and so we yes, got, you are allowed to play golf now after that horrific accident you were. We in. got to uh, got to play some golf this weekend with uh, with Mr. Gerber and Jeb Brown, and and uh, we played at the Bridges of Madison County Country Club. It's not the Bridges of Madison County. It's not a movie. It's oh. the Bridges. Well, Clint Gunner. Eastwood was in the group behind us, right? No, he was not. Oh. My bad. Because he would have said, 
get off my lawn. Get off my lawn. Love Clint Eastwood. So, yes, we did have a little show golf outing um, yesterday. Lance convinced me to go play golf. First time uh, in what? First eight time years? in eight years. That a boy. Not just that I played golf, that I swung a club. You did and well, I was not man. just playing golf. I was playing with a PGA pro uh, and then two amateurs that are not far behind that PGA pro. Way far behind. And I can't believe I set myself up for that. And by the way, I'm not just playing golf with these people. I'm playing golf with 24-year-old clubs that I still thought were cool. Uh, but apparently, and it took Mr. John Gerber about nine holes to tell me, hey, um, by the way, you're at a disadvantage before you even ever step up to the ball because your clubs are old and they suck. At least none of your shit broke. He said, technology has come so far. And all I could say was, has technology come far enough to prevent Mr. Big Red Lance Dorset from breaking a club in the middle of the fairway? And apparently it has not, because that occurred. Well, the chefs are and not made And I believe it was a hole that you parred. Chefs are not made of rebar. <sighs> Lance was ticked off at a shot that he took. Uh, literally threw Don't his club on the ground. What club was it? It, it was, was one of your wedges, it was right? My, it was my gap wedge. Gap wedge. Whatever that is, does anyone know what a gap wedge is? Does it have a big G on the heel of it? Because I don't know what the hell a gap wedge is. Some do. This one did not. It was I like 54 degree, 10 degree with bounce. three through nine, your pitching wedge and your sand wedge, sir. I have a... The hell is a, a gap wedge? Explain I yourself. Have, I have a five through nine, a pitching wedge, a gap wedge, a sand wedge... And a lob wedge. Whoa. What the hell? Why do you have so many? You have more wedges than irons. Does your short game suck that bad? <laughs> I, will say, I will say that it does because I was with him. My short game is getting better, but no, it it malfunctioned. It <laughs> went off in my hand and broke. <laughs> it malfunctioned. I, I, was, I was cleaning it and it went off. Sorry. Well, I was no more than... Eight feet away from you when this occurred. Yeah, I'm just glad it didn't hit you and in the I'm face. I'm still cleaning shards of steel out of my eyes. Maybe I wished it would have hit you in the face. You wouldn't have brought it up. You brought it up. Before I did, I did sir. but it was just a little underlying comment that could have been left alone. My wife would have never known. I could have reshafted, and now I've got to explain to her why I'm breaking the shit again. That's fine. Hey, we had a good time playing golf, but I also have one more thing to bring up about yesterday. Lance didn't just break a club after it was a really bad shot. I mean, I'll give you that. Lance also came within about a nanosecond of throwing a perfectly good club into a lake. The three wood, it deserved it. That was your three wood. Son of a bitch deserved it. By the way, you also parred that hole. Yep. From the... <laughs> From the green side trip. So you need to stop parring holes, and you'll stop breaking clubs. That's my, that's my analysis on the situation. I'm sure that every other golf pro would agree with me. Stop parring holes, and you'll stop breaking clubs. There are no golf pros here, so there's no other golf pro to agree with you in here. I'm going to text Jim Nance right now and Tony Romo. Tony Romo. Maybe Gary McCord. I got them all on speed dial. Do you? Yeah. Do it. Gary McCord at 976sex.org. <laughs> <laughs> at mustachemaster.com. Yes. He does have the greatest mustache in golf broadcasting. So we did have a lot of fun playing golf yesterday. We did. It was hotter than all get out, by it the way. It was hotter than the hinges of hell. Good I guess. Lord. It was, and all we had to drink was all of the water. That was in the beer we were drinking. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> I put on a brand new cap yesterday, and I end up having sweat dripping off the end of the cap before we got through six. I had to take it off. It, 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 it yeah. It was, it was. Uh, Did you show me that hat? The, by the way, the white hat that you had that was yes. brand new. Yeah, it was. And Lance was showing me not only the sweat line as it was going away from his head towards the end of the bill. And then up from the sides, up. Up, all, all the way up we to the We made the turn, and he shows it to me again. He's like, 
what is all this these brown marks on my hat? I'm like, dude, that's dirt coming out of your pores because it's so hot. It may have been brown liquor coming out of my pores. That was all the, the Jack Fire we were drinking on the course. No, no. So Lance knows how to ruin a good hat. It'll uh, wash out. His $10 hat. It'll wash out. It won't wash out. I promise. I yeah. promise you. <laughs> I bet it will. I've been, I've been through this. I You've seen I've, my red Hellenbach hat, bet, right? I bet I've got a woman that can clean it. You know how many times I've washed my red Hellenbach hat? <laughs> and by the way, you only pick up by the little nub because it's so yeah, disgusting. Dude, it's, yeah, it, 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 it talks back to me when I try to pick it up. Yeah. It, it barks at it me like, don't it, touch like me. the dog does. It yes. says don't touch me. It's gross. And there's a reason for that. So we had a good time. We didn't get to finish the round. Um, for me, for those of you who are interested, after eight years, I still got it. Well, kind of. Kind of. I had a golf few swing, good shots. There's a golf swing in there. And, I had some and, terrible shots, and too. He, he will go out and, and see uh, Mr. John Gerber at the Highland Performance Golf Center in Carrollton, Texas, and get his golf swing where it needs to be. Yes. Yeah, so, again, um, our shows, as always, are sponsored by the Highlands Performance Golf Center in Carrollton. Uh, we will be out there live doing our show on Saturday, June 15th for their demo days. Yep. The Saturday of the U.S. Open. Um, they're going to have different manufacturers out there, and you will have an opportunity to try their stuff, putt with it, drive with it, hit with it, hold it, balance it, uh, stick it up your nose, whatever it is that you want to do with a golf club. Stick you will have every – or up your ass either way. Whatever you want to do with a golf club uh, from – all the major manufacturers, they will be out there for demo days um, at the Highland Performance Golf Center. They're at uh, golfcenteratthehighlands.com. Uh, and we talk about them on every episode. We post stuff about them. So we hope you guys can come out and take a listen. We love those guys. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. John Gerber is a true professional. Uh, he didn't laugh at me one time yesterday, by the way. I, I you believe, realize that? I, I believe he gave you more kudos than he did me, and he's been working with me. And well, I'm better than you. Oh, well. All right. Well, let's, let's, let's make a show bet. Let's make a show bet. All right. And what's our show let, bet? Let's go play the next time. We'll play even up. And if I don't beat you by... You don't have to give me strokes. I'm not going to give you strokes. All right. If I don't beat you, then what? I don't know. Give what, me what does Stacy have to do? Give me no, Stacy doesn't have to do it. No, we're not bringing Stacy into this. Stacy will not. What does Lauren have to do? Well, now, hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you want to make it interesting? Let's let's make it interesting. We're not swapping wives for the night. I'm sorry, I'm not into that. Well, I'm no longer just in this bed. <laughs> 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 oh, I just got shot daggers from your wife over there. Yeah, my wife just says, y'all do whatever. <laughs> so, hey, I hope she has a lot of faith in your golf game, by the way. She has more faith in me than anything in the world because somehow I landed her. Yeah, you did. Yeah, we celebrated your one-year anniversary on the air a few weeks ago, and I believe my words were, I didn't give it a chance. No, you didn't. Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, I call it like I see it. Good. Uh, <clears throat> so you know, hey, well, you, you're gonna call that out. You were over. <laughs> you're one for four right now. I uh, and I've got my forever. I'm one for three. I'm a little better than you. Well, uh, so you might make it to the baseball Hall of Fame batting 300. Hey, I'll take it. At least I'm above the Mendoza line. <laughs> Nobody knows what the Mendoza line is, I promise you. They should if you're a baseball fan, you know what the Mendoza line is and who it's named after. So, uh, so hey, speaking of being angry and punching things, which describes not, our golf round yesterday. I have yesterday. not punched anything in a while. So. Lance, are you aware that the city of Manhattan up in New York has installed public punching bags in the city? No. For <laughs> pedestrians to use. Well, they're angry. This is a real thing in the city of Manhattan. They have installed, there's a company called Don't Take This the Wrong Way. I don't know what why it's called that. I did not do the research. I don't care. This should be our tagline on this entire <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, whatever we're don't about to say. Don't take this the wrong way. Please don't take this but the wrong way. Dot, dot, dot. That's like when you say you start a sentence when you're about to cut somebody down and you say, no offense, but, yeah, it doesn't work that With way. With all due respect. 
So that company, don't take this the wrong way, they're a design studio out of Savannah, Georgia. They installed a series of public punching bags around Manhattan uh, earlier this year. The idea is to give people a way to momentarily express their frustrations in a public place before going on about the rest of their day. Get all fixed up before you come in front of the camera. <laughs> so, your, oh, your, everybody hey, do a shot? Do it. Do a hair flip. There you go. Add a baby. Oh, Add a baby. I feel like I'm at Hooters right now. Woo-hoo. Wait, wait. Woo. wait, wait. We're doing shots. So, we're, so those of you not scoring at home, we will later. Some uh, of us will. We are about to do shots with those here with us. I believe that is Mr. RJ, but not Choppy. No. My buddy oh, RJ, RJ? Yeah. from Zoe's Kitchen. Oh, which one? Right here. Dude, I tried to eat there the other day. And it was delicious. You tried? I did. It was, right. I don't understand the concept, but it was good. I liked what I ate. <laughs> hey, it was good. Thank you, brother. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Shots on the air. Yeah, the last time we last time we did that. I think oh, we were, that was delicious. I think we were kicked out. <laughs> that was a long time ago. We won't go into that. We've deleted that episode from our catalog. <laughs> We've deleted nothing. <laughs> We pur- we have purged. We purged. <laughs> Might purge when I get home. <laughs> so public punching bags, Lance. Lord help us. Let me know if you think. Okay, I, have, I, have I would two, wear a son of a bitch out. I have two suggestions about this. If, if there was a punching bag, in, if there were punching bags in Denton County along 380, I would have to stop probably every quarter mile. To wear one of them some bitches out. Well, yeah. But what if we had public punching bags? I'm going to bring this up because this is where I want one. In my office. I would like my employer to put these up on every corner oh, I in my about, office. I thought, I thought you were talking about one of your kids walking by or something. The second place I want them is at home. But first and foremost, I would like these in the office. Would you like to have... You don't have an office. You freaking work out of your truck every day. I have an Do office. Have an off- Do you I ever go to work? Yes. Yes. Like a real workplace. Yes, like a building. I have a real workplace that I go to every day. Where? I dispute that. Even your wife said where. I am going to cut both of your throats in your sleep tonight. <laughs> Not mine, because I ain't sleeping with you anymore. That doesn't make it premeditated, right? So... Maybe I need to get more drunk. So public punching bags. I mean, if you're going to do this anywhere, it seems like New York is the place to do it, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Tuto. Yeah. Um, I, I, so I don't know if this is like a test market for other cities. Like, I hope they do this other places. I mean, but if anybody needed it first, it probably probably wasn't Manhattan. It was probably like the Bronx or Brooklyn or somewhere. I feel like Manhattan, that's pretty tame compared to the other four boroughs in new york right burrows. no burrows i said is, burrows is it like something that you dig you burrow into Not something speaking of former ranger great jeff burrows either no no the great jeff burrows of ranger fame so yeah so uh hey billy can we get public punching bags in our practice room for the band I feel like Taylor would really enjoy that. You realize we have not made it to segment one yet. No, we're not supposed to. We're only 53 minutes in. <laughs> Spill it. I'm going to make sure I can find it on my phone because we got no Wi-Fi right now. So, yes, the segment we were going to transition into. Everybody, hey, who's a Cow- Cowboys fan? Woo! Dallas Cowboys? Woo! Jerry Jones fan? Yes, yes. Hey, shut up, RJ. <laughs> Don't make me cut you off. Wendy, 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 you hear me right now? Wendy? She's Wendy. not listening. That guy gets nothing else the rest of the night. He's got a bucket of beer. Hey, by the way, your Bud Light beer is in a Miller Light bucket. As no. it should be. But it tastes better than Miller Light. Duh, I don't know about up. that. Up. Man, I can't believe I took you to play golf the other day. <laughs> Wait, are you cheating on me with another golf person? Shut up, Tim. <laughs> so what we would like to do at this point is revisit the Dallas Cowboys 2016 draft. Because everyone knows that you cannot grade or judge a draft the night of, 
the week after, the summer after, because they haven't played a snap yet, right? It's ridiculous. They do it anyway. Yes. So, going back to 2016. And, and we know draft guys. We just can't seem to get one of them on to talk with us. Well, we can't seem to get any of them sober enough to come on with us. <sighs> hey, one of these hey, days, that's hey, going to happen. Jeff, you still owe us an intro and an outro. Mr. Jeff Cavanaugh, Mr. KT Fun Tweets I'm Turner. You, I'm putting you on point, son. Jeff can't stay sober enough to do us a show intro and outro. No, he, he, he can't stay in town long enough because he's running around <sighs> with his girlfriend and going... Off to San I hope, Francisco. I and hope all they the break up. Shit. I hope they break up. He's a different dude since they started dating. <sighs> Love you, Jeff. But hey, she has put him in some decent looking clothes. He doesn't wear fucking. No, she he, hasn't. He doesn't wear shitty ass sleeveless t shirts and shit all the time. I liked him better before. And what's wrong with sleeveless t shirts? There's nothing wrong with sleeveless t shirts. Of course, Veronica is going to be really mad when she sees this. She probably saw this on camera and she's like, I ain't going yeah, there. She saw this. And F them. <laughs> Veronica made her t shirts and we cut the sleeves off of them because oh, Jesus. that's who we are. So, do you know that the Dallas Cowboys drafted nine players in 2016? Nine players. Yes, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll go with that. Um, we had one in the first round, one in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, and four in the sixth. Okay. Out of those nine players. So, we give up our seventh. Out of those nine players, only one is no longer with the team. So, that in and of itself, I would say, makes for a good draft. Correct? I agree. You got eight of your nine players still on the roster, still yeah. contributing, yeah. regardless of who they are, yeah. what position. You have to consider that a decent draft. Yes. Will McClay is a fucking genius. Beep. Ah, sorry, I was taking a beer. However, what if I told you that two of those, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, Five of those nine are still starters three years later. Makes it an even better draft, like right? A great draft. So let's break this down really quick. Good. Um, first pick, uh, first round, fourth overall pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Ezekiel Elliott, running back from Ohio State. Somebody needs to slap that boy in the damn face and get his ass straight. I, Maybe one of the. I love the dude, man. I love watching him play. I, I, I love that stuff. But there's a time to grow up. There's a time to be a man. And he's 23, and he still doesn't know. I was dodging bullets at 23. Well, he's dodging linebackers. Yeah, well, it ain't the same. I would rather dodge linebackers than bullets. I agree with you, sir. Uh, with the 34th overall pick in the second round, the Dallas Cowboys select. Jalen Smith, linebacker from Notre Dame. Greatness. Yeah. Dude. I'm they took a flyer on him because of his injury status. They did, but the, he is now one of the best linebackers in the game. Many, many draft ex so-called experts, uh, local media, criticized that draft because yes. of his knee injury. Yes. And well, I, mean, I would say dude, to he you, was, he was, it has worked out immensely. That leg did not work. He had drop foot. He had everything. He had no nerve in that knee. Nope. And Jerry trusted him. And all the guys in the front office took took that to heart. And they knew that his heart, his heart would bring him through. Dude, not everybody can play at Notre Dame. And I'm not a Notre Dame fan, but, dude, I have the utmost respect for that program. Yes, sir. They don't just let anybody in. Uh, in the third round, with the 67th overall pick, the Cowboys select Malik Collins, defensive tackle from Nebraska. Do it again in a minute. Uh, dude, for a third-round pick, we're, you can't go wrong. In a minute. Dude has been solid. He's been injury-free. Uh, and he is a contributor three years later. You cannot argue with that. In the fourth round, with the 101st overall pick, the Dallas Cowboys select... Charles Tapper, defensive lineman from Oklahoma. Not the guy from uh, Bar Rescue. Right. <laughs> John, <laughs> not, no, not, no. John, not John Tapper. By the way, the only guy in the draft is that is show. no longer with the team. Um, he has been hampered by injuries, and we'll get into that a little bit here in a minute uh, as we break it all down. But, uh, no, a complete disappointment in the draft. Um, by the way, also, the answer to a trivia question. Uh-oh. 
the Cowboys drafted two people in the fourth round in 2016. One is still a starter, one is not. Of course, the second one, with the 135th overall pick, Dak Prescott, quarterback from Mississippi State. Is that how you feel? Or is that just a... Um, kind of too much beer. I'm kind of, you know what? And I have been a big Dak Prescott opponent and opponent. So you George, don't like Dak, dude? His rookie year, he was on fire, and because nobody knew his game. But I believe a lot of that had to do with the offense they were in. Right. You know, between his rookie year and his sophomore year, it was a lot of uh, Linehan, and they they ended up picking him off. Not not picking him off interception wise, but they did do some of that. But they learned him, and I believe that with our new offensive coordinator and with with what's with what's going to be happening soon mr Ke- the 29 year old g- offensive genius kellen moore um, according to the, jerry jones there is man there's and a players lo- there, and players there's a lot of hype going on about uh, about mr kellen moore and would love to have him on our show one day but uh then maybe we can work that out but i'll make it happen well i mean i know people you're the one with all the connections i'm just the drunk <laughs> guy that talk shit so i'm just the good looking one over here <laughs> but uh but yeah with uh, it, with you know some of the stuff we've heard coming out of otas you know kellen is uh is is changing stuff up they're moving people around i i, I still believe 100 percent that it's uh jay Jeezy's, uh offense but uh but he is tricking it up enough to change things around and whenever a certain offensive formation comes up, you know, we not everybody in the world will know that it's going to be a run. So I, I look forward. I look forward to the year, man. I'm excited. So the question I, is, I am excited. Can Dak Prescott, again, we're not, this isn't a segment about Dak Prescott, but the question is, can Dak Prescott handle uh, Kellen Moore's supposedly open wide offense uh, they're they're supposedly switching up positions, switching up formations to start every play, um, and that's kind of what they did to start his career. Well, I mean, yes, I believe that I'm going to back off of my hard stance of not paying Dak the money that that he's going to ask gonna pay for. Him the money. They, There's no question. They will pay him the money, but I will I will back off of my stance of being hard against it. But to, because he deserves he deserves some money. But if he can get through this year and and be the quarterback that they're designing this offense about, then it's it's going to be fun, dude. I, I, if I don't, I don't even know what to say. All right. I, I, Again, this is not a segment about Dak Prescott. Right. Or Kellen Moore. Sorry. I'll so, shut up. W- in the sixth round, Which with the 189th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Anthony Brown, cornerback from Purdue, who has been a starter since his rookie year. He has been moved to safety and moved back to corner and has done nothing but prove his – his ability to adjust to whatever they want him to do. Hey, honey, have you seen Anthony Brown at the bar? No. No? No. Well, maybe be a little bit more friendly and see if you can't bring him in. Okay. Uh, with Just not that friendly. In the sixth round, with the 212th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Kavon Frazier, strong safety from Central Michigan. Kavon Frazier. Still on the team. Yeah. Still contributing. Plays yeah. a backup role, but you know what? Sixth round, 212th pick, he's going to be a backup. That's, that's the best you can hope for, and that's what he's doing. Uh, with the 216th overall pick in the sixth round, the Dallas Cowboys select Darius Jackson, running back from Eastern Michigan. And I'll be very honest, I've never heard this guy's name. 
Darius Jackson from Eastern Michigan. I do he not is, remember uh, him. But he's on the team still. He's on the roster. He's on the roster probably on the practice squad. I believe Maybe. the roster does not include practice squad. Okay, so I'm But wrong. you could be right. No, 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 no. You could be right. Put that in. Apologies. But my notes here week. said roster, which which to me means the 53 man. So, honey, whenever he comes in and, and asks for a uh, blooming onion and a steak, just tell him that your husband screwed up on the podcast, and I'm sorry. So, the very pick after Darius. Uh, <coughs> Apologies and corrections. Uh, the very next pick after Darius Jackson, the 217th pick in the sixth round, the Dallas Cowboys select. I believe you're a fan of this dude. Rico Gathers, tied in from Baylor. Uh, if he's given the chance, if the man, if, if, if the coaches will put him in, he, I believe not that he will be a Hall of Famer as uh, Tony Gonzalez, but... He could make shit happen. So, are you comparing Rico Gathers to Tony Gonzalez? I just said I wasn't. What the hell? I mean, why you got to throw me under the bus like that, Timmy? Come on now. I just said I'm not comparing him to Tony <laughs> Gonzalez, one of the single greatest tight ends to ever play the damn game. But I thought by saying that Don't you actually man, were like re- reverse no, no, psychiatry. No, this, it's psychology, not no, psychiatry. I know, it, I know what it is. Dumbass. <laughs> but listen, I'm not, no, I am not putting him in the in that, in that same boat. My God, that's oh impressive. My God. Yes, my God, it's impressive that you're that dumb. But if you will, <laughs> if they will give the man the chance, he has, there is no crickets. Did you hit that 17 times like you did last week? That's the first time I played it tonight. <sighs> Now that that's <laughs> over. Okay, so all I'm saying is the man is a basketball player. With Playing a, football. With a huge body. And that's what she said. She said body. I said body. I didn't say anything else. But given the opportunity, I believe the man could turn into a fine tight end. Will he be? Will he be Tony Hasn't Gonzalez? Hasn't he had some off the field trouble? Not that I know of. Nah, I think I he's had some off the field trouble. Chasing, I ain't chasing Rico Gathers. Yeah, I need. He played at Baylor. I mean, what does that tell you? Nothing. That he's got off the field trouble. Why? Played under Art Bryles. Art Bryles is now the high school football coach of Mount <sighs> Vernon, Texas, of three A air. Yeah, we will save that for another show. Because that's a joke. And that will be a powerhouse within the next two years. Yeah, put yeah, yeah. Put your put your no see goggles on, idiot. <laughs> I I'm hate out. our brawls. I'm out. I hate Baylor. Fucking Bears. Don't hate Baylor. Why? Because they're a Texas football team. They're we in need Waco. To support them. Why? Why not? Why are they in Waco? Because that's where they were founded. Why not support them? I don't have relatives that went with the Waco, so I Jesus apologize. Christ, we need to wrap this shit. Up. I actually do like Waco. Somebody. <laughs> so we're not going to get to the best and worst quarterbacks ever for each NFL team? Uh, we can. Go ahead. I kind of feel like we shouldn't at this point. I feel like there's so much contentiousness right now. No, no, let's just go. I'm, 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 I'm all in. That and the fact that we have no internet to do it. So should we, hey, let's take it from the crowd. Should we run down yes. the best and worst quarterbacks of all time yes. from the yes. NFC East? It's a great segment. It was Lance's idea, so I feel like we have to do it. Don't, no, don't put that shit on me. No, it was a good segment. Yeah, I know. It's a, it, it's a good article, and we've if, had it. If I can find it. We, we've had it We've had it in the rolls for a couple of weeks. We just hadn't done it, of course, like the other one. that we. Yeah, we have one of mine, by the way. The top 20 U.S. cities that U.S. citizens can't get far enough away from fast enough. Well, and then that I've, I've pushed got... back now for four weeks, but it's always on standby. We'll get Jackass. to that eventually. All right, well, if I can pull up your I link. got it. You I, got it? I, I sent it to you. I know. I'm looking right now. Dude, Verizon is not very fast in these parts. We're in the sticks, brother. So we're not going to go through all 32 teams, nope. which, 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 which they are on here. But we will go through. What do you want to go through? Well, we've got to do the Cowboys. NFC East. Because I disagree with the Cowboys one. Eh, it, it's why it's up for contention. 
So, well, let's, hey, I don't just want to do the NFC East. Okay. The just, first one I would like to address is the Chicago the Bears. The Bears. And do you know why I would like to the address Bears, the, the Bears, Bears? The Bears. The Bears. Do we have any the Bears fans in the in the in the bar? Bears fans. I hope Anybody not. that cares? I hope not. Thank you. So I thought it. I thought it was interesting that they point. This is by the way from Sports Drop. I thought it interesting that they have listed as the very best quarterback ever to play for the Chicago Bears, the Bears. Sid Luckman. Sid Luckman. And and, and Lance, when did Sid Luckman play in the league? Sid Luckman was before I was born. He was before our parents, well, not mine, maybe not, were born. Come on. Sid Luckman played in the 40s. Yes, he did. Uh, my father was a teenager in the 40s. So my father was born in the 40s. The best Chicago Bears quarterback ever played in the 40s. I Sid feel Luckman. bad for the Chicago Bears. So the article reads, though the Chicago Bears franchise has had some, some of the most iconic names in NFL history on the roster, including Walter Payton, Dick Butkus, Mock Singletary, they haven't had anything close to that at the quarterback position. The franchise, forever known for its Monsters of the Midway defense, haven't boasted a truly elite NFL quarterback since Sid Luckman played under center for them in the 1940s under legendary coach George Hallis. Papa Bear. You were in elementary school in the 40s? Probably. That's what my kids would tell you. Dude, I have been to your class reunion. <laughs> you were not there. We keep bringing that the up. Luckmans we're going to have to talk about it. Passing yardage and touchdown pass totals were eventually surpassed by Jay Cutler, who sucked P.O.S. <laughs> and latter is not... And will never be a five-time All-Pro selection, the Hall of Fame inductee like Luckman. So, being that as their best, who was their worst? Mr. Bob Avellini, which I guarantee you... I have never heard of this jackass. I could pull 100 Chicago Bears fans in Chicago between the ages of, let's say, eh... 14 and 54, and I guarantee they have never heard of Bob Avellini in Chicago. You, you, all you got to do is hold your nose, and you can make it sound better than that. The Bears. The Bears. So I thought that was that one was interesting outside of the NFC East because uh, their best quarterback played 80 years ago. Yep. Uh, the other one that I thought was noteworthy was the Cleveland Browns, eh? Oh, wait, they're, they're not from Canada, are they? No, is they're Cleveland not. in Canada? Well, it might as well be. <laughs> is it close enough? Dump. <laughs> so the article gives the best quarterback in Cleveland Browns history to Mr. Otto Graham. Otto effing that, thank Graham. You, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. At least somebody knows who the hell he is. So, of course, this takes into account the old Cleveland Browns as well as the new new Cleveland Browns as the uh, same franchise because when they moved to Baltimore, uh, the NFL kept the Cleveland Browns records and history in Cleveland. So, uh, which as well they should have. They should have never moved in the first place. So, again, we've got a dude that played in the 40s and 50s as the best quarterback of a, fr- a franchise today. And that makes me sad. So who, um, who, was, who was their worst? Huh? Come on. This Come makes on. me very happy to say. <laughs> it, it makes the me giggle. worst quarterback it makes me giggle. in Cleveland Browns history. Billy, I any guesses? Come, Come Brandon on, Brandon Whedon. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, Billy. Dude, Brandon Whedon was bad. It, it mentions... <laughs> In 2012, NFL scouts and teams were first learning the drawbacks of drafting a quarterback who played in a spread college offense. Uh, Which because now, that's what everybody, Brad, now everybody's drafting them. Because NFL offenses didn't do that back then. So, yeah, he finished the his career. The NFL. He finished his career with a 5.1 passer rating. 
Five, that can't be right. That can't. That, that's that's golf, Holmes. That's golf. He was no. the sixth, sixth no. lowest passer rating by a season opener by a quarterback attempting at least 15 passes since the merger in 1970. I can't even focus on this shit anymore. Brandon Whedon was terrible. Finished with a 5.1 passer rating. 5.1 passer rating. Holy shit. All right. Well, those are the two balls. outside of the NFC East that I cared about because I thought it was really funny that dude went back that far. So, uh, Lance, do you want to do Cowboys now or should we do that last? Let's do Cowboys now. Who is the greatest Cowboy quarterback to ever fucking play the game? You got that Bingo. right, sir. Boom, we have a winner. How about this? We got a winner. How about this? <laughs> There's your koozie, baby. Thank you so much. Yes. The great Roger Stahlback, the Heisman Trophy winner from the Naval Academy. Captain America. Captain America. And Captain Comeback. Yes, but I hate that moniker. The innovator Because if of you don't fall behind so far at the beginning of the game, you don't have to come back. He was the innovator of the Hail Mary. Him and Drew Pearson, who I, is a friend that was of a mistake. mine. That was a mistake, by the way. What was a mistake? The Hail Mary. It should have never happened. I'm going to punch you in the fucking ears. Hey, I'm just God. saying. Should have never happened. Quit falling behind so it much in football ha- games that you don't have to come back, to have, Roger. It shouldn't have had to have happened. Do I need to make another proclamation right now? Sweet Jesus. Go. I will kick Roger Staubach's ass right now. <laughs> well, he's like 70 something, so I hope you could kick Roger Staubach's ass. But my bet is right now, folks, right now, folks, I will bet a round for the house that. Timmy would get his ass kicked by Roger Stone. You know what? I have met Roger. I, I caught passes from Roger in uh, 2004. And he was still at a charity to, event. Still trying to drill a hole through your and ass, wasn't he? It still hurt. Yeah, good. I don't know how old he was. He was good. mid deserve, 60s, I think, back you, then. You deserve it. Dude, those passes still hurt, and they were still right in the middle of my chest. Asshole. Uh, pretty sure he would kick my ass, but you know what? I would. Go down swinging, brother, because it's Roger F. and Staubach. Captain fight, America. I ain't going to fight him. I'm going to stand behind him, waiting oh. for him to... I didn't make my point very well, did I? No. No. <laughs> Dang it. I hate I'll, when I do that. I'll whip your ass when he drops. So, why isn't Troy Aikman the greatest Cowboys quarterback of all time? He won more Super Bowls. He won more Super Bowls, but as a fixture of the franchise... Roger has got to be. Roger has got to be there. I mean, I agree. I My remember. Brother agrees. Billy, you hate the Cowboys. Shut oh, up. He hates the Cowboys. No, shut up, Billy. He's a Texans fan <laughs> and an Astros fan. Texans and Astros. Somebody please escort that man from the bar. <laughs> we love Billy. Well, we do, He's but part he, of the show. he cannot be here now. He's part of the no, show. No, he, he cannot be here. He cannot be here. So, worst quarterback in Dallas Cowboys history. You know how many there are to choose from? Uh, th- uh, dude, there, Ooh, is, someone said there, Romo. Is a, there is a bunch to choose from. We have so many to pick from. There is a bunch. Um, but who are we going to go with? Chad Hutchinson. Chutch. Chutch. Uh, Chutch. The article says in the era between Troy what Aikman and Tony Romo. disaster that dude The was. Dallas Cowboys went through a comedy of errors at the quarterback position and at the head coach position, too. <laughs> Chutch was one of those spectacular errors as we witnessed during the 0-2 season. Despite the fact he set the NFL record by most passes thrown by a rookie without an interception, 95, Chutch finished with a 2-7 and seven record in the nine games he played, throwing only seven touchdowns and eight interceptions. Aww. One year later, Big Bill came in, and guess who the first person he benched was? Peace, Chutch. Chutch. And who was in place of Chutch? Rome's Q car. No, uh, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, what it, the uh, Quincy Carter replaced Q car. Who, by the way, yes. won a playoff game for the Cowboys. He did before he got more addicted to the weed and was a was a uh, the biggest proponent in the media. Q car. <sighs> we we Q, hardly knew for you. Q car, dude, was Mr. Randy Galloway. Oh, hey, here's another. Oh, yeah, we're not done yet. Sorry, Mr. Randy Getting Galloway. Sidetracked. Randy, Randy Galloway. Randy Galloway. He liked Q-car? Oh, he did Randy like Q-car, Galloway didn't he? Yeah, bailed he did. Q-car out of, out of jail. jail. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. One of the greatest 
reporters and broadcasters in DFW history, Randy Galloway, bailed Qcar out. Qcar went on to the Jets, where once again he failed miserably, and Galloway was not in New York to bail him out that time. Yeah, because he sucked. Hey, I found another team uh, that has an older than F uh, best quarterback ever. Anybody care to guess? What team from the NFC North has never had a good quarterback since the 40s? I got, I got you. I got you. And the quarterback's from Dallas. I got you. All right, let's go, Lance. Who you got? Bobby Lane. The Detroit Lions. Yeah. Um, Bobby Lane spelled just like my little brother's last name. Yeah, and uh, Bobby Lane was great. And I was shocked at their worst quarterback ever for the Lions. I thought there were many way worse than this guy, Joey Harrington. Yes, I mean. He was bad, dude. Harrington, but, dude, Harrington, he was so bad. Harrington was a Heisman Trophy winner, was he not? Uh, I don't on, know, man. After episode on. one, I'm not going to debate you. I know he was up there. I know he was a hey. Look it up, Billy from Ohio. No, Heisman Trophy winner from Ohio, Oregon. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. It, the O's confused me. <sighs> They're not me. the same place. The O's confused me. I'm sorry. Yes, it was Oregon. He was hey, a duck. Joey Harrington won a Heisman. Oh God. Jesus. He has an iPhone 3S. He's not allowed to look at the internet on his phone. Yeah, they 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 throttle his shit way too far. So yeah, I thought we had way more uh, worse quarterbacks in Detroit than Joey Harrington. Greatest quarterback ever. This this is debatable. Greatest quarterback ever from Green Bay. Give me somebody. Come on. It's no brainer. No, come on. I'm about to leave you to go pee. By the way. No, dude. Brett Favre. Brett Favre yes. is, is is the one. Is the one. Brett Favre is... is, is I'm about to leave listed. you to go pee. Well, can you this, carry this by yourself for about I, four minutes? I probably can, but you have... I don't know, I don't know how you're going to get by me. <sighs> Holy... Sh- hey, Billy. Billy, you want to you come fill in and, and talk about uh, talk about the band? Because Tim, Tim, Tim's fixing to fall over shit. But... Uh, uh, no, you're fine, baby. Just sit there and look pretty. Uh, here comes Billy. So, yes, Brett Favre is listed as the greatest quarterback for Green Bay. But what about our brother, Bart Starr, who recently passed? Would you not put him in the same echelon with... Nobody asked you, RJ. I'm, I'm sorry, Nobody asked. Friend, Joey uh, Harrington uh, sounds will, like a tight end's name. We will, we will put that in apologies and corrections. I'm sorry. I uh, screwed that one up. Please don't knock your beer over on my table. Uh, Am I doing a good job? Yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing great, Billy. You're doing great. But, yes, uh, Brett, Favre, Brett Favre is on uh, Sports Drops, greatest quarterback of uh, – history for Green Bay. I mean, had he not been traded from uh, from the Falcons right. to Green Bay, he'd have never been there and never given the opportunity. But, uh, yes, great quarterback. Who was, the, who was their worst? Who was their worst? I don't even know the guy. Randy oh. Wright. Randy, Randy Wright. Wright. Never heard of him. No, I haven't either. Tim, where you at? Tim, you need to hurry up because I'm, I'm – I'm running out of steam here, brother. Thank you so much, uh, Billy, for, for coming over. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, hey, hey Billy, just just duck and crawl underneath oh, here. Nuts. Just go under this table. That was impressive. That was quick. That was quick. But I don't know if I can do that. I don't understand. Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome to Dude, this episode. <laughs> you are you are an hour and sports podcast. You are an hour and twenty four minutes late. Oh, we've already done that. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Christ. Huh? Okay. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up here pretty soon. Have we gone to the Maybe. NFC East yet? No, we have not. What so are we doing? W- we did the Cowboys. Oh, snap. I lost my internet connection. <laughs> All right, who else is in the NFC East? I will do it myself. Uh, let's see. Are, is Los Angeles in the NFC East? No. <laughs> God, you 
Suck it, man. Uh, podcast. Let's see. Host. Dolphins. Nope. Uh, Minnesota. Nope. Uh, New England. No. Oh, God, God. Guess who the greatest New England quarterback is ever? Jesus. Take a guess. It's not Drew Bledsoe. I will tell you that right now. Some guy named Tom. Jesus, I hate New England. Shut up. Uh, oh, here we go right here. Here we go. New here York we... Giants of the NFL Football League team. It would be Northeast. the New York Football Giants, sir. Greatest quarterback of the New York Giants. Wow, this kind of that doesn't surprise me, but Eli Manning. Eli Manning. Dumb face. Really? Dude, get really? off Eli. Really? Oh, dude, no. He's dude. He's got a dumb face. What? Man. You want to pick Kerry Collins or Phil Sims? No, because no, I, I will take I will take Eli Manning because I hate listening. Who else are you gonna pick? I hate listening to Phil hey, Sims. Otto and Graham played for thank New York. Thank God, as well. Tony Romo came along to boot Phil Sims from the damn boot. He didn't boot him from anything. Yes, Phil he did. Yes, he did. He was good enough in his practice rounds. They got rid of Phil Sims, got his ass out of the damn booth. Oh, because, in the booth. Yes, okay. yes. No, somebody Tony w- Romo saved me from having to listen no, to Phil Sims. No, somebody was going to take his place regardless, whoever came out Dad, that year. Phil Sims is a douche. So, the worst New York Giants quarterback of all time, and dude, trust me, you could have picked a lot of people, but for the for the interest of this article... It's also Eli Manning. No? Am I wrong? I'm about to punch you for talking bad about Eli. It's- just because Eli you have is a, a saint. You have a son named you have a son named Eli. Did you name him after the, yes. the dumb face yes. quarterback? Yes, I did. Because he's a freaking man. I'm, so, I'm sorry, folks, we're out. Done. Worst New York Giants quarterback of all time, Dave Brown. Was, Most of you will not remember I thought him. Thought you were gonna say like Dave Campo or some Dave shit like Campo. that. Uh, we don't care about the Jets, Browning, Nagel, or uh, low Raiders. Kent Stabler, best, worst, Jamarcus Russ. Of course. Uh, oh, here we go. Eagles. Greatest Eagles quarterback of all time. Any, the any guesses? The Figgles. Because it's not who I would have guessed. Huh? Nick Foles. Nick Foles. Nick Foles. <laughs> hey, I put Nick Foles higher than this guy. Yeah. Cut him off. Cut him off. Other guesses. Uh, lost yep, this minute. guy never Changing won a Super Bowl, in. but he went to a lot of NFC championships. How about games. Cunningham? Donovan McNabb oh, is God. their best pick. Hey, did you not hear? Did you hear about how Donovan yes. McNabb was talking smack? I want to be in the Hall of Fame because I'm better Aikman. than Troy Aikman. Yeah, well, hey, suck Donovan, a root, dude. You played in Philly, Get Mitch. gone, jackass. Uh, worst Philadelphia Eagles quarterback of all time, as he probably can do this for all the teams he played for. Everybody. Bobby Hoying. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Led the team to a 3-13 and record, which led to the Eagles firing who? Andy Reid. Although Kansas City is very happy they did that. Uh, let's see. Who else do we? Oh, hey, Niners. Guess who their best quarterback ever is? Kaepernick. Yeah. Idiots. <laughs> Who said Kaepernick? Oh, dude, this is funny. Whoa, 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 this is funny. Come closer so I can punch you in the face, Greatest please. Greatest Niners quarterback ever. I swear ever. to God, if you get any closer to me, do not touch my wife. I will, <laughs> I swear hey, I will leave this table and punch you in the face. do you want to know who the worst 49ers face. quarterback in history was? I don't know. Heisman Trophy winner. Florida Gators. Uh, Yeah, that guy. The old ball coach. Uh, no, the worst... Steve Spurrier. That's bullshit. I don't know, dude. Look at that picture. Look at his hair. Like, he I'd had, probably vote for him, too. He still has hair, like, like I do. I mean, we Spurrier still, won the Heisman in 66. He was the third overall pick in the 67 he draft. He is not the worst quarterback in 49ers history. Uh, he flat out stunk for the Niners. Uh, let's see, where else are we going here? Tampa Bay. Nope. Oh, God. Okay, here's a, here's a telling story about the Tampa Bay franchise. My wife is now telling me that I have gray hair on my temples. The Tampa Bay best quarterback of Bitch. all time. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Winston. I would have gone. Th- that is not in the NFC East. No, I know, but it's, it's interesting because it's terrible. Oh. I would have probably picked. Uh, Winston Churchill. Doug, what's his name? Winston Churchill. He didn't play for the Buccaneers. He played for the freaking Panthers. Jameis Winston. 
Brad Johnson. No. Greatest quarterback in Tampa Bay history. He was a backup quarterback for the Cowboys. He's pretty good. Dude, the worst in Tampa Bay history is Vinny Testaverde. <laughs> no. Dude, this that, article no. now loses all yeah, credibility. Yeah, we're I'm we're sorry done. I brought this up. Yeah, I'm sorry I even um, sent that but to we're you. Gonna that's, go, yeah, that's you, terrible. Yeah, this was you. Oh, by the way, the Washington, yeah. the Washingtons, because we can't say their names. Well, we can. You can't on the radio anymore. I'm sorry. We've, we've gone straight to Elmo. The Washington Redskins, greatest quarterback of all time. From the 30s. Sammy Baugh. Slinging Sammy Baugh. Again. RG3 was not from the 30s, you dumb jackass. Who their greatest quarterback stick played 80 to, years ago. Stick to singing Good front Lord, for the Wild Rams, please. Thank you. Leave the All sports right, well, talk to us. It doesn't make it any better because uh, their worst quarterback was Rudy Giuliani. No, it's Ralph. Rudy Giuliani? Googly, 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 googly Ralph, great googly moogly. Go- great googly moogly. Nobody's great ever heard of this googly, dude. But he apparently moogly. played at Notre Dame, and he was the fourth overall pick in the 55 draft. So, yeah, there's your NFC and other greatest quarterbacks and worst quarterbacks of all time. It is up for debate. Uh, I still contest uh, that Danny White is the greatest Cowboys quarterback in history in the Cowboys history. Uh, and I still contest that Phil Simms is the worst and best Giants quarterback in NFL history. About to get bonked on the head here. Uh, so, punchy. hey, it's up to you guys. And we do have another segment like we do every every week, but we're not going to do it like we don't every week. So, once again, the segment that never will be uh, will be uh, the top 20 U.S. cities that Americans cannot get out of fast enough. Uh, but we never get there because we never have time and we talk really loud. So, hey, just, just hey we are at the Horny Toad uh, Cafe and Bar in Denton, Texas. Woo! We would like to thank everybody that's been here with us tonight. We would like to thank everybody at the bar. Our red hat bubba left some time ago. He got really pissed off yeah, at something I, I mean, said. Apparently, uh, jackass. We would like to thank, uh, what's your name, brother? Oh. Tim. Well, I'm Tim. You can't be Tim. What's your other name? I'm Tim. Tim is Jeremy. All right, there he goes. There's another Tim at the the bar. The other Tim. We would like to thank Tim. I've got too many people in my life. Our lovely bartender. My girl. Uh, We we would like to thank RJ, not Choppy. We would like to thank Stacy. We would like to thank Billy. We would like to thank Tim. As long as 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 Billy didn't try to talk sports. Uh, everybody at the Horny Toad, thank you for having us out. We're going to probably come back and do this again, hopefully outside where we belong, where people will not listen to us so yeah. closely. Yeah, we can. That way we can get drunk. Um, we will be uh, in uh, on June 15th out at the Highlands Performance Golf Center for their demo days. You guys come out and see us. We'll post more about that on uh, social swing media. Swing some sticks with us. It'll be fun. Swing some, st- dude, swing yeah. some sticks with us and drink some beer with us and do some shots with us. I bet I'll drive we're gonna you. we're going to have all the alcohol there. Dude, I drove you for one hole the other day. Yesterday. I outdrove you with your a, club. I hit a fucking seven. Your club? No, it was the the vibrant no, four. Don't 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 lie. Right. I, hit a, I hit a seven. I He's in denial. Hey, denial ain't a river in Egypt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Wire Rims, the greatest rock and roll band of all time, will be live at the backyard on they Bell this Thursday, good. eight p.m. Right, eight p.m. Come out and see us. It's a hopefully an outdoor. Dill, if the weather permits, if not, we'll be back inside, shoulder to shoulder, crotch to crotch, butt to butt, but we're still going to be playing. Dude, they got good buddies. beer. They got cheap beer out there. So, uh, Also, don't forget about um, Lance. Don't forget about me. I always try Ever. to man, You, just you keep can bring, reach you us. You keep bringing yourself up. I keep trying to forget about you every damn day. You can reach us on Twitter. I am at IndyCar Tim. He is at Drunk Big Red. The show Twitter is at Drunk Sports DFW. You can email us at the Drunk Sports Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can also find us everywhere in about every prison, jail, mention, anywhere in any town. Our Speak names will for be. yourself, bro. Uh, I am not see, in prison. Shots. I am not If you'd like to that. do a mugshot uh, search of me, 
dude, you will find so many awesome pictures because I you, smile every time. I you promise may, you. You may find one of me and it was not a happy day. Before Lance shaved his head, by the way. He doesn't have to. He just does. So, He's hey, everybody, thanks for joining us. We had a, man, we had a kick-ass time here tonight. It was fun. Hey, it was thanks fun. to everybody. <laughs> thanks to everybody that was here. And we're going to close it out. Lance, as always, why don't you take us out of here? Once again, folks, we, uh, Timmy and I both hope that you find happiness as we have and just take care of each other, love each other, remember why we're here, and uh, have fun, folks. We love you all. Thank you so much. All right, thank you for listening to this episode of the Drunk Sports Podcast. Join us next time for more Drunk Sports Talk with Lance and Tim. They are hammered. Until next time, here's to ya. We're all drunk. This is the funnest night ever. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely.